ready to teach for the day and I am trying to kind of come up with a schedule of how many more of these that I'm going to do. Um, I know that I'm at least going to go through next week so I will kind of lay out a plan and make sure that everyone is aware of that whenever I make my decision. So um, what you will need today, you will need paper um, you will need paper and a pencil for today's lesson. That should be every And um, I'm ready to get going. So what I am going to do today, I'm going to kind of bounce off. Um, again, I have shown you my author's purpose chart many times. Uh, just something very easy for you to make. If you have not made one of these for yourself, I would still strongly suggest that you do that. That way um, you can remember the three main kinds of author's purpose. And I said that all texts will fall into at least one of these categories, if not even two of them. You know, there will be a main author's purpose, but lots of times there's kind of a secondary one that's floating around there. So I am going to teach you a little bit about how today's lesson falls into that kind of fourth author's purpose that I have mentioned before. I consider these to be the big three, but some um, people in reading series kind of say there's a fourth one floating out there too, and that is to state an opinion. Well, the book is not going to be stating opinion, but we are going to focus on opinion stating for our author's purpose, if you will, as we are, will be the authors writing about um, the text. Now, we will at the end be able to revisit this and figure out, okay, what do we think the main author's purpose or purposes are in the book that I'm going to use, and then bounce off that and give the um, opinions that we are going to form. So on my uh, board today, I did draw some rainy clouds because it's been raining off and on. And then my little squiggly lines represent wind because it's been windy off and on here too today. So I hope that you are ready to listen and learn and get started. Um, the text that I'm going to use today is all of these, many of these texts that I brought home are ones that I personally love. And this is one that I like to teach with every single year. It is a phenomenal piece of writing. And it is by the author of many people have heard of the book Stella Luna. And there have been, you know, lots of classes we'll do, in act, you know, activities with Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. It is a much loved book by that author. Well, this is another one of her books and it is called Pinduli. And I do not own Stella Luna, but I love Pinduli. And I've also read one of her others called Verde, which is about a little green tree snake, a tree viper that is trying to live its best life. So this is Janelle Cannon's Pinduli. And the main character, Pinduli, as you can tell, is a hyena. So we're going to read to find out um, what Pinduli experiences in this book. I love the pictures. And lots of times she will show little illustrations on the side that you have to pay attention to also uh, because they will continue the text. She is the author and the illustrator. The sun was low in the East African sky. The animals had been sleeping all through the hot afternoon, and now they began to stir. Penduli awoke before Mama Hyena, eager to explore. Don't go far, Mamo yawned. We must hunt soon. There has been so little to eat lately that we'll need all night to find enough to fill our bellies. Penduli promised to stay close and trotted away. So there they are sleeping. And there's Mama kissing her, saying, you be good. As Penduli passed the water hole, she spied sleepy animals in the brush. She sniffed the air, which was rich with exquisite and mysterious smells. Ooh, very good vocabulary words. But something was not so exquisite. 
or mysterious. It was the smell of dog. Penduli's sharp ears pricked up at the soft pounding of pads on the dirt. She spotted a pack of wild dogs at play on a far away ditch, and then they saw her. There she goes. And uh-oh. They're going to go after this little hyena pup. The leader dashed toward Penduli. The others trailed behind and yelped, Watch out, dog! It's a hyena! Just a shrimpy one, dog scoffed, coming closer. If it didn't have all that stripy fur, those ears would make me think it was a baby elephant. The pack erupted into wheezing laughter and galumped away, tongues lolling. So as you can see, here they are making fun of Penduli. And this is Penduli's reaction. You can tell, make an inference from this picture. She's sad. They've embarrassed her. Penduli had never given a thought to her ears. Were they really so big? She let them fall flat against her head. Plip, plop. I can hardly hear now, Penduli thought, but she kept her ears down. So here she is, maybe barking at them, saying, you meanies. There she's putting them down. So she can hardly hear now, which means her ears are an animal adaptation to allow her to hear the uh, predators and maybe prey around her. But she can't use her adaptation unless they are sitting up the way they're supposed to. Ahem, a rumbling voice came from the scrub. Ahem, Penduli whirled around, a lion. The little hyena poofed her mane and suddenly looked twice her size. She was sure that she was mighty fierce, but lion just calmly looked her up and down. Then he leaned his old scarred face nearer and said, that prickly fringe hardly becomes you, young lady. Penduli's mane flopped as she hurried away. She'd never given a thought to her coat. Was it really so straggly? So here is that. And there is her reaction again now. So she's been made fun of twice. Penduli circled back to the water hole, waded in the pool, and let the water soak into her fur. She figured that when the water ran off, her coat would lie flat. No more prickly fringe. Zebra and two friends strolled over, their brown eyes glinting at the sight of the soggy little hyena. Penduli didn't like their amused look. She tried to lower herself deeper into the water and disappear, but she was too late. There she is. So now she doesn't want her ears to be up in adaptation. She doesn't want her fur to be prickly and, and um, big, which is an adaptation to make herself look bigger around predators. If you're going to do stripes, please, please, please work on your symmetry and clarity Good grooming and not soaking will take some of that unpleasant haziness out of your patterns, whinnied Zebra. Then the three tossed their heads, dipped their lips into the water, and drank. So now the zebra is saying, my stripes are better than yours. And look at this picture here. This isn't Penduli, but this is Mama. So this is kind of a meanwhile picture. Mama is looking for Penduli. She's saying she's been gone a long time. Penduli splashed past the startled zebras and escaped to a quiet spot. Were her stripes really so disorderly? Didn't Mama Hyena always say she was the most beautiful hyena ever? She rolled in the dust, in the pale dust, which stuck to her wet fur. Soon her soft stripes had completely vanished. There's Mama looking again. And here she is trying to cover up her ugly stripes. What she has been told are ugly stripes. Ears pinned, coat flattened, and dusted to a pallid gray. Pallid means like a soft gray. Penduli wanted nothing more than to go home, hoping no one would notice her. I'm really in trouble now, she worried. I've been gone a long time and Mama gets awfully cranky when she's hungry. Yep, there's Mama calling for her. But 
This is what Banduli looks like now. Does she look like a hyena at all? No. As she headed back to the rocky den, she saw lion, zebra, and dog, along with his rowdy pal, pals hanging around the water hole. A few wildebeest were there, too, for an evening drink. My, it's busy out here tonight, thought Penduli, edging away from the others. No luck. The animals turned to see who was coming. Their jaw dropped. Their eyes bulged. Penduli looked around wildly. What was it they saw? Look, there's Mama, and you could tell in her face. She's not real happy. Penduli's still gone. But now she's come up on these animals that have made fun of her, and they look scared. So it's made her scared, scared too. A ghost, the animals screamed. The animal spirit is upon us, they jumped and ran. We are, we are, cried Penduli as she raced behind them. Feet pounded and desks flew and no one answered. So, yep, mama's on the prowl looking, she's man. And Penduli's going, where's a ghost? She doesn't realize the ghost is her. The terrified crowd tore through the thorny brush over craggy stone and horrified found themselves at a dead end in a small canyon. They screeched to a halt, huddling closely as they turned to face their worst fear. Oh, it looks like Mama came up upon a warthog. And here's their worst fear. The spirit. Dog was the first to speak. Oh, great spirit, he howled. Oh, you've come for me. I know it because I made fun of a young hyena's ears. All eyes were on Penduli. Ah, so I'm the ghost, she thought. I better get character before they recognize me. Go on, dog. Penduli said in a slow, deep voice. The spirits want to know why you would commit such a hideous, awful, atrocious crime. Dog's voice quivered. I, I don't know. I guess I was still mad at Finnick Fox for calling me a butterfly head. There's Mama. She's still looking. So, hmm. He felt bad about himself. So he wanted to make someone else feel bad. Interesting. Lion joined in. Oh, please scare it. Please, please, please spare us your wrath. I too have spread discord by insulting a young hyena's mane. But Vulture called my own mane a mange. For like a dog or an animal that has mange, it means if something's mangy, it's not filled out, it's not pretty, it's not full, it's just real spotty. Penduli nodded sagely, so to nod sagely would be like, mm, yes, I see. So, Mama's in a tree, and Lion is so scared he can barely look. He was made fun of, so he made fun of someone else. Zebra stomped her hoof. Al told me that my stripes were garish. A tear rolled down her long face. So that means, you know, ugly, um, you know, loud. Loud is not hearing, but loud is in like, cut, you know, off color. Um, so just not, not pretty. Everyone fell silent. Penduli's mind whirled as she tried to think of what a ghostly spirit might say. Of course, spirits always give tasks and one offerings, she thought. Mm, let's see. Okay, Mama will love this. And look what's happening to Mama. She now has a baby elephant on, pulling on her tail. Poor Mama. And there's Zebra. So sad and, and just embarrassed he's crying. In order to appease bad spirits, you must find your tormentors and make peace, Penduli called out with authority, and always leave a bit of every meal as an offering. If you do this, I shall never return. She turned and glided away on her tiptoes, trying not to smile. Leave a bit of your meal? Guess what hyenas hunt for? Little leftover bits. So she's saying, hmm. 
maybe they'll leave some of their food and we don't have to hunt anymore. Oh, thank you, thank you, called the creatures. We will do as you say. Once out of sight, Pinduli raced home. Oh, and there's Mama. So Mama is depressed now. And there's Pinduli thinking, hmm, I have outsmarted them and taught them a lesson. They wanted me to change. And when I did, I ended up outsmarting them. There you are, cried Mama Hyena as Penduli galloped up to her. You look awful. Penduli was so glad to be home again, it was worth getting in trouble. She didn't even mind the five baths it took to get the dirt out of her fur. In fact, it took all night to get Penduli looking like a beautiful hyena again. I was worried sick. I went looking everywhere for you, said Mama Hyena. She helped smooth Penduli's coat. Now that you're all straightened up, we've got to get out and find something to eat. It's already morning, and I'm sure you're as ravenous as I am. Ravenous is a way to say is starving. Penduli's stomach growled. So there they are. Yay! And I love this picture. Mama licking Penduli. That very morning, dog, lion, and zebra searched the wide savanna until they found Finnick, fox, vulture, and owl. We've come here in the order of the great spirit, dog announced. We must find out why you were so rude to us. Finnick, fox, spoke up. Well, I guess I was having a bad day. Serval cat said I looked like a little fuzzy bat without wings. He nodded to dog. Well, your ears really aren't so bad. Vulture ducked his bald head. Marabou Stork called me Moonscape, so I got mad and made fun of Lion. So a vulture has like a bald head, it almost looks like, and it's white, and it almost looks like a full moon. Owl moaned, oh, Adder the snake said my feathery stripes look more like scribbles. Let's go find those three and get to the bottom of this, said Dog. So there's Pendooly jumping in the pond. She's happy now. And there they are, all saying, we were made fun of. So look, the Penduli got made fun of because the animals were made fun of, and now those other animals were made fun of. Do you see how this can work? Bullying leads to other bullying to make you feel better. Hmm. Maybe no one should do it at all. The oddball crowd went searching and found Servo, Marabou, and Adder. We've come here in the order of the Great Spirit, they declared. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble for laughing at our straits, his stutter. Miss Zebra, do you remember when I said your stripes were dull, mumbled Zebra. Marabou stepped forward on her stilt-like legs. Lion told me that the glare of the sun on my head hurt his eyes. Sorry, grumbled the big bald cat. Then Dog blurted, oh dear, Serval, please forgive me. Serval's amber eyes squinted at Dog. You mean for the time you said that the wind might pick me up by my giant ears and blow me away? He said, yep, Dog yipped. Who am I to be talking about ears? He pranced about, flopping his big ears like the wings of a butterfly. Ooh, figurative language. Like the wings of a butterfly. A simile. Servo burst out laughing, and everyone, including Dog, joined in. So, Pendooley got her water pit or uh, bath, and now they all are saying we're all guilty of making fun and bullying others. Poor Penduli got the brunt of it. From that day on, things began to change for Penduli and her mother. Instead of spending hours hungrily scrounging for meager meals, little meals that mean nothing, they found delicious treats everywhere. Look again, eggs, fish, fruit, it's a miracle, exclaimed Mama. As Penduli tasted a sweet berry, she said, the great spirit must be smiling upon us. Mama Hyena looked at her grinning daughter. Wait a minute, did you have something to do with this? Laughing and feasting, Penduli told the whole story. You're not only the most beautiful hyena ever, said Mama. You're the smartest hyena ever. 
There they are rolling around. Billy's full. And smiling at each other. Eating some breakfast. So that's the end. And Janelle Cannon often has at the end of her um, books that are all animals. They're all what you would consider fables. A fable, boys and girls, is um, a type of writing. It kind of falls in the same category as fairy tales and uh, tall tales and mythology. But a fable is where animals are the main character, but they all have something called personification. Personification means that they act like people. And so um, the, the fables are told, they all have a very important lesson to them or more than one lesson to them. But instead of using humans, they use animals as the main character who tell the story. But at the end of her text, she often has um, nonfiction. So in this case, she wrote about the hyena families. Um, there are several kinds. There's a striped hyenas. There are four. It says all hyenas look like dogs in many ways, but actually they are a unique family of their own called, called a hyena day. Within this family, there are four species of hyena. There's the striped hyena, the spotted hyena, the brown hyena, and the ard wolf. So here is a picture of the four different kinds. Penduli would have been a striped hyena. Um, and then it says there are other questions. Why are some animals bald? Why are others striped? Why do others have big ears? So it all talks about their animal adaptations too. And all of these animals had to understand that they all looked differently based on adaptations that they needed in order to survive. So what we're going to do today, I'm gonna to bring back my author's purpose. And I would say, you know, the ending part, the nonfiction part would definitely be 100% informing us. So like four pages of the, of the afterthought are nonfiction to inform us real facts about something, about different animals, their adaptations, and the kinds of hyenas there are in the world. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about those hyenas, you can look them up after this lesson. I would say that our two authors' purposes, a fable falls into these categories. They are written in a way with personification to entertain us, to enjoy reading, to enjoy watching, all the while, persuading us to do something. So our two authors' purposes would definitely be a combination of these for the main Penduli text that we just read. But what I'm going to have you do now, we are going to work on opinion stating. So um, using that Penduli text, I am going to work on and develop two solid opinions that can be based on um, the text. And if I need it, my text is right here. I can always flip back and use it if I need to review. So one opinion I'm going to write is Penduli was right to, so what was a good choice that she made? Penduli was right to maybe convince the other animals to make peace with each other because she realized that they, it, it was a never ending cycle of bullying there on the African sa savanna. So Penduli was right to suggest. The animals make peace and then I'm also going to say and apologize apologize to each other 
So my opinion comes from she was right to suggest this. A little bit of. There we go. Penduli was right to suggest the animals make peace and apologize to each other. That's my opinion. But now I'm going to support it with the text. So how do I know that she was right in making this choice? Well, because the animals were all bullying each other and making each other feel bad. And it was continuing the cycle of making fun of each other and bullying. It continued the cycle of bullying. So I would argue that our theme of this would definitely be, our, our theme of this text, say kind things to each other. Because this book proved that bullying can be a never ending thing. People, say mean things and it makes others say mean things and then eventually it doesn't matter who started the mean comments all that matters is that everyone has hurt self-esteem so we need to only focus on the positive things that each other does and not point out the negatives now there's a difference of course you need to remember this. There is a difference in helping others. Maybe someone is getting, you know, wrote something incorrectly on your on a paper in your group and you want to say, oh, wait a minute, you misspelled that word. You know, you need, hey, I see that you forgot a period here. That's helping other people. That's pointing out something that, yes, they made a mistake about, but, oh, thank you for pointing that out. I need to go back and fix that. It's different if you're pointing out what you think someone has that isn't as good as you. That's the difference that you need to remember. Okay, so Penduli was right here. So now I'm going to give an opinion to state a character that did something that was not okay. And I'm actually going to stay on Penduli here because I just talked to you about, I could write over and over and over. Uh, the lion was wrong for doing this and this and this. The fennec fox was wrong for doing this. The death adder snake, which is a highly venomous snake. It's, it's called the death adder for its full name, was wrong for doing this. And I could make a whole list of how all the bullying and all draw a bunch of arrows, how it all affected everyone else and I had arrows in a complete web all over my paper but I'm going to focus on Penduli and I'm just going to say Penduli was wrong because she did do something that was wrong in a way even though she was solving helping solve a problem on the African savannah Penduli was wrong for not returning to mama quickly. She said she was going to, wasn't she? So she was wrong when she did not return to mama quickly. Now, you might argue that it was for a right reason up here. She didn't make the best choice in the world by returning when she said she was going to. This made Mama very worried that something 
happened to Pinduli? So Mama had to search for her, didn't she? Move that so you can see. Mama. So Mama had to search for her. Um, so maybe this is another theme in our text right here. You could probably argue that for boys and girls. If you say you're going to do something, and if you say that you are going to be back at a certain time, mamas and daddies can get very, very scared. So you always have to do what you say you're going to do. And even if you say, well, it was for a good reason, do you think mama is still going to punish you, give you a consequence like what Pinduli got? Absolutely. So she was in the wrong for not listening to mama and doing what she was told. She helped solve a big problem, but she still disobeyed. So those are two opinions that I have from our Penduli text by Janelle Cannon. I hope that this um, gave you a better insight on how to make opinions, how to state them correctly and form strong ideas, both for or against to something. I hope you enjoyed this fable by Janelle Cannon. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. So I will see you tomorrow. And until then, have a wonderful Wednesday. I love you. Toodaloodle poodles. Goodbye.